The Science of Learning Research Center presents Psychology, Education, Neuroscience, P.E.N. Pen Principle Number 5. Leverage Context According to Outcome. It's arguably one of the most creative experiments ever undertaken. In 1975, a pair of researchers asked a team of deep-sea divers to memorize a list of words while they were 20 feet underwater. A day later, half the divers went back underwater while the other half stayed on dry land, and all were asked to recall as many words as they could remember from the day before. These researchers found that the divers who were tested in the same environment in which they did their learning, in this case 20 feet underwater, remembered 35% more words than the divers tested on dry land. This experiment was a perfect example of context-dependent learning, which states that an individual who learns in a single location will perform well when tested in that same location. In fact, neuroscientists have demonstrated that individuals who learn a set of objects in a specific environment demonstrate enhanced activity in the hippocampus, an area of the brain linked to memory and spatial location. In fact, this enhanced activity occurs even when individuals don't consciously pay attention to the environment. This suggests that the details of where learning occurs are automatically embedded and encoded in the memory of what's being learned. Now, all this is well and good if where you're learning and where you're tested are the same, but what if you want to transfer knowledge to a novel environment. Recently, researchers looked at just this question. These researchers asked a group of individuals to study a set of words four different times in the same location. Then they asked a different group of individuals to study the same words in four different locations. Afterwards, both groups were tested in a novel environment, one neither had seen before. And what did the researchers find? The individuals who studied in four different rooms performed 40% better than those who studied in one room. Now this experiment was a perfect example of context-independent learning, which states that an individual who practices in many different environments will perform well when tested in a novel environment. And of importance, both context-dependent and context-independent learning have been demonstrated in the classroom such that students who prep for an exam only in the room in which the exam occurs outperform students who prep for the exam in other environments. And when an exam occurs in a novel environment, students who prep for that exam in multiple locations outperform students who prep for it in only one. Classroom Applications So we've seen that where a person studies can impact learning and performance based on where testing occurs. So how can we use this in the classroom? One idea is that if learning outcomes involve a single application or a one-off performance in a known location, such as an admissions exam in a lecture hall, try to facilitate practice within that environment, or at least try and mimic it as closely as possible. However, if learning outcomes involve diverse application or performance across various environments, such as a basketball team traveling to many different schools to play games, try to facilitate practice in many different and varied environments. Ideas and Future Directions So it seems clear that the environment in which we learn is naturally embedded in the memory of the concepts that we learn. And this leads to an interesting question. Are there certain features of the environment that impact learning or memory more than others? And if so, can we leverage those features to improve learning and enhance our ability for far or near transfer of the learned material? Some important questions that could really influence the way we choose to design our classrooms and our schools. On behalf of everyone here at the Science of Learning Research Center, thanks for watching.